Oh, sh Zoom in, please. Zoom in. Zoom out. Dramatic zoom, please. I gotta get my views up. We bought $20,000 worth of cupcakes and we're smashing them all. This is content for adults and children. We bought $120,000 worth of cupcakes. We're smashing them all. <laughs> Amazing. Well, guys. We're back in the hell again. What are the rest of the lyrics to this goddamn song? All the doors I closed one time will open up again. We'll be have back in the high life again, okay? And we'll drink and dance with one hand free. What's the other hand doing? Well, that's amazing content right there, wouldn't you say? Yes, I would. Thank you. Play the person of the day graphic. Okay, well, today's Time Magazine person of the day is... What the hell does this say? The AI rat with a giant... Uh, what does this say here? Ridiculous AI-generated image of a well-endowed mouse gets past peer review into a scientific journal. Oh, wow. It's weird. It's, 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 it's weird. So, you know, I was wondering, how did this dumbass, stupid-ass image get into a scientific journal? One of the reviewers reportedly told Motherboard they reviewed the article only on its scientific merit. The decision to include the AI-generated figure, they claimed, was ultimately left up to the goddamn journal. You know, we've been getting a lot of scaremongering, fear-mongering, all kind of mongering about AI. Ooh, AI is going to replace art. AI is going to replace art, artist. You know, you'll see some terrible AI-generated clip. They're like, Hollywood doesn't, have, <laughs> Hollywood doesn't have a chance against this terrible clip with a guy with four arms. We've been hearing that for a while, and I never believed it until now. Because a rat with a giant Okay and a bunch of nonsense labels like DCK. <laughs> That's pretty good art. So now we have reason to be as scared, okay? For one day. So big shout out to that rat. Keep doing, <laughs> keep on trucking. Oh, well guys, you know, many of us. We don't have time to keep up with what's going on in the headlines. You know, the headlines, What is? what even is it? Oh, this guy said that. This other guy was like, no. It can be a little much, is all I'm saying, but when I do want to know what's going on, what are the big, what are the big news stories in the world? I like to find the absolute worst possible sources of information to find those headlines. And so I'm like, dude, I will just go ahead and eat meat. And so the other day, I did have some bread. Okay. We did uh, tenderloin, Nusseret style. We can <laughs> okay. never recreate the amazing meal that is Nusseret. If you don't know what that is, it's uh -huh. a Salt Bay guy where he does the thing with the salt. Okay, great. So he went to the Salt Bay restaurant. All right. He went like this with the salt. Okay, so here this guy's doing a bit about a weight loss drug that has become very popular. Okay, the drug begins with an O and then a Z. It's epic, and it's epic. I don't know. Somehow this guy ends up talking about the Salt Bay restaurant and pork and all this stuff. Uh, what he doesn't mention and what, what's actually interesting about this uh, appetite suppressant weight loss drug is that they're finding all kind of weird crap about it. You know, it kind of got buzz as a miracle weight loss cure and all this crap, but it turns out it you know, messes with the pleasure center of your brain. It has like a million possible side effects. It's an injectable. It costs like a thousand dollars a month. And I've read that when people stop taking it, they immediately gain the weight back. So that's... It's, but somehow uh, this guy misses the most interesting part of that story. But anyway, Kevin O'Leary has been on a tear. Who? Over what's happening in New York City. Oh, one of those a judge tank sharks. Hey, 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 hey. I said that's one of the tank sharks, I said. A judge fined Donald Trump $355 million. Just about. Whoa. And he's asked, but it's fraud. And O'Leary says, what fraud? Here are the important details. Most of you know this. It's weird. The... Suit against Donald Trump was not brought by any businesses, oh. was not brought by anybody who was damaged or defrauded. Bye bye. It was brought by the state. Donald Trump did not commit fraud. They are claiming it is fraud to evaluate your own asset. Whoa. OK, yeah. So this is like the top story of the day. So it's probably worth talking about. You know, what the hell is this? So this guy, Trump, he goes like this. It's weird. So he lost a civil fraud trial. He has to pay 350 mil. Ooh, whoa. You know, and there's two sides of this story. The one side is like, how much does this really affect my life or your life? Probably not much. Is it good that this guy's getting some of this? Boom, 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 boom. Sure, yes. 
But the other side of this is I'm watching all these channels, you know, Tim, whatever other guy. And it's kind of funny because they're like, this is not fraud. Fraud didn't happen. You know, and then a couple minutes later, they're like, oh, yeah, fraud did happen. This guy did do fraud. But come on. Everybody does it. It's the 80s. Everybody's doing a little bit of this. Boom, boom, boom. So, yeah, I was curious. What's the truth of this whole thing? What's going on here? You can read the decision, the, the judge's decision. It's a New York case. It's 91 pages, blah, blah, blah. You can read it. And basically what it says is, uh, look, if you create documents or you get somebody to create documents in order to get loans, you know, get a bunch of money, get a lower interest rate on the loans, all this crap, and those documents have a bunch of lies in them, you know, and it's a lot of money, yeah, you could get in trouble for that. If I did that, my ass would be in prison. My ass is going, bye-bye. But, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the case. If you're doing fraud, yeah, that's fraud. That's pretty much it. It made me realize. Uh, yeah? I think people are focused on the wrong thing. Oh, Kevin right. O'Leary says, who's going to want to invest in New York City now? Okay. You're right, nobody. But... New York City is nothing without pizza! Okay, so yeah, Tank Shark Kevin O'Leary has been going on all these channels saying that nobody's going to want to do business in New York City anymore because this guy has to pay a bunch of money for this civil fraud trial. Now, this guy Tim is like, yeah, nobody's going to do anything in New York City anymore. I think it's a little more complicated than that. The truth is, if you're the most high-profile political figure in the country and you want to lie about your assets in order to get big loans and low interest rates and you're doing very clear fraud, yeah, it's probably going to be hard to do business in New York City. You're doing a little financial fraud, you're doing a little bit of this. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, come on. Come on, it's the 90s. But, you know, for my audience, many of you are involved in frauds, shadow play of various kinds, you know. Shh, keep it, keep it low. Shh, keep a low profile, you know? Just do your frauds and shh, shh, shh. You know, come on, everybody's doing a little bit of fraud. It's the 30s. It's the 1930s. The play here right. that I see yeah. is communism. Oh, of course. You okay. will not be able to evaluate your own buildings. Okay. You will not be able to evaluate your own pay rate. All right. Only the authority can decide what you're worth when you're worth it. Whoa. Okay, yes, I do think this is a fair point. But I do think this standard should be applied to everybody. You know what I mean? You know, like, there's this really cool guy I know. His name is... Ladrom James. His name is Ladrom James. You know, and he's doing a little bit of fraudulent <laughs> sometimes. You know what I mean? You know, he's not a big fan of scanning all his items. You know, and then one day when he was vaping in a restaurant where it was very clearly marked, you're not allowed to smoke or vape, and he got caught and he got in trouble for it, he stood up, looked around the restaurant and said, this is communism. We are in communism now. I broke a rule. <laughs> I broke a rule. I got in trouble for it. We have entered communism. Everyone started clapping. And that man is now in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And again, his name is... Ladrom James. Okay, this is some pretty funny journalism right here. Check this out. This is great. If you want to invest money in New York after this, how about we go well, somewhere I, I else? Think, how, I think how there how are people to... who would... I don't want to cut you off, but I, I want to... We'll, we'll skip this next part of their banter, which makes no sense and is needless. <laughs> oh, wait a second well wait a minute you mean the lady who's challenging what the guy you like is saying oh we don't need to listen to that we, we don't need to we're gonna skip right over that part boom 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 boom. i love that that actually is really funny it really is like oh no here comes something that's gonna challenge what we already think better skip skip but this cnn anchor is basically like uh but you're saying this is a victimless crime you know uh, whatever did, did a little financial fraud whatever but isn't that a little bit unfair that if we did that, if I did that, if some normal person did that, you know, faking all their assets, you know, lying about how much their assets are worth to get better deals and all this stuff, we would go to jail. I mean, this tank shark Kevin O'Leary, he's hilarious too. What is this thing called? Kevin O'Leary, Trump judgment left investors asking, who's next? And it's pretty funny because in this interview, he basically says like, look, if you can't do massive financial fraud with a huge paper trail in New York City, nobody's going to do business there. I don't know how this guy keeps doing this because this guy, this was just like what? This is just a year ago. This guy got totally busted for peddling, you know, peddling, selling FTX, which was a scam crypto thing. He was like a spokesperson for it. He got put, how much did he get paid? 15 mil. He got paid 15 mil to promote FTX. <laughs> you know, a bunch of people lost their ass on that. Turned out to be a total fraud. He was pitching it, you know. And now he's like, hey, people need to be allowed. To <laughs> people need to be allowed to do scams. Not naming anybody specific, but certain people, bald, need to be doing scams. Let them, leave them alone. The country is shifting. That is, 
Yeah. If you're a regular role real estate developer, okay, you're going to avoid uh, avoid New York. Right. But if you're a Nazi, whoa, you're going to want to build in New York. And why oh. do I say Nazi? Okay, great. So it's both communism and Nazism. What whatever the hell's going on here? If you do giant financial crimes and get in trouble for it, that's communism and Nazism. Oh. <laughs> We are currently in a constitutional crisis for a variety of reasons. <laughs> oh, no, no. But mainly because... Oh, we are? Oh, shit. Oh, what are we going to do? Where to, what, did, what was it? What kind of crisis? And now we have this. Whoa. Immigrant from Hong Kong becomes first non-U.S. citizen appointed to San Francisco Election Commission. Who? Yo. This lady moved here in 2019. Oh, my God. And she is now, five years later, serving on an election commission. Oh, this is a constitutional crisis. <laughs> it is a question of who is entitled to these rights and protections. Absolutely now, right. OK, now this right here is a great segment. OK, and I've been noticing this kind of stuff on this kind of, you know, stupid media. He's just throwing an absolute shit fit about immigrants. This is a new thing. If you make this kind of media, you want to get clicks. You want to get 128,000 views in one day. You got to throw it fit about immigrants this is kind of the thing to do and he's like this is a crisis look at this let's just read the fox news headline that he's looking at immigrant from hong kong becomes first non-us citizen appointed to san francisco election commission oh my god it's a crisis it is out of control generally speaking, no so yeah this guy's trying to kind of feed into his audience's panic about immigrants you know but he couldn't have picked a worse story to do that with kelly wong's appointment is the result of a 2020 voter approved measure that removed the citizenship requirement to serve on San Francisco boards, commissions, and advisory bodies. So yeah, kind of hard to call it a crisis when the people who actually live in this city are like, oh no, yeah, you don't need to be a citizen to serve on this crap. The historian uh, we had on, Jeff, he, he mentioned that, um, I think Mayhew, am I, am I getting his name wrong? Huh? I, wanted, I wanted to be uh, careful here. Never heard I think of I got it right. Okay. He was mentioning, uh, yeah. Okay. That, 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 yeah, right, right. Okay. You I got, got it? Right. I want to make sure I got your name right, Jeff, because I would be uh, Jeff Mayhew. Huh? He was saying that the southern states okay. were empowering themselves in Congress using slaves. Oh, Basically, boy. these people were uh, not, uh -oh. didn't have the, the ability to vote. So the three-fifths compromise was the South wanted them to vote so they'd have more representation. Okay. They argued that they should get congressional seats based on the slaves they had. Oh. A very few people had slaves, but it was still a few million, I think three million at its peak. So they were giving themselves extra congressional seats and then voting on it today. Mm -hmm. The Democrats are doing that with immigrants. That's right. They bring in non-citizens. <laughs> he seems pretty unsure about this. He's like, hey. Okay, great. Amazing. He goes into this whole thing about slavery, how slave owners use their number of slaves to get more political power and all this crap. Goes into all this. And you might be asking, how does this connect to the fact that San Francisco voted? Hey, if you're not a citizen... You know, you're here, maybe you're going to grad school like this lady and you're on a student visa or whatever. That shouldn't prevent you from, that shouldn't prevent you from serving on some San Francisco board. They voted for that. You might be asking, how does that connect to slave owners trying to get more power? Well, the way it connects is, and, anyone here is a citizen, a global citizen. Uh-huh. And it seems like that's what they're trying to do. When that happens... The things that your father and your mother and your grandfather and your grandmother, the things that your ancestors built. Alcoholism? They will be handed down to no one. Oh. You okay. will have nothing. Okay. You will eat the bugs and you will live in the pod. Oh. And then one by one, the same thing will affect <laughs> a, the rest of the world. What a lunatic. There's more and more. Yeah, so my boy's going off here about his grandpapa and his father and his ancestors. Oh, oh my, my ancestors. You know what I'm going to guess this moron's ancestors did not do? Uh, take a 13-hour flight from Hong Kong to San Francisco to go to grad school, work for a civil rights organization in San Francisco, and then become the first non-citizen serving for a board. I'm going to probably guess they spent their time doing way stupider stuff. You know, why does our grandson wear a hat all the time? Like that kind of crap, you know? Here's what's funny about this. I'll be the judge of whether or not it's funny. Boom. I would like Rolling Stone to know. Okay. I'm not terrified in any way of your cover. In fact, I didn't even comment on it until now. Whoa, and now whoa. I'm going to. Whoa. I can't speak for other anti-woke social media accounts, but I'm going to start this segment off very simply before reading their criticism. Oh my and God. then I want to show you uh, some examples. Oh, good Lord. Kristen Stewart, 
looks gross. <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean. Oh, no. I don't know or care for Kristen Stewart. Whoa. I don't care. That oh, that's too bad. She's a pretty interested, man. Okay, time for some real talk here. Play the real talk graphic. So you say Kristen Stewart looks gross, right? Let's say Kristen Stewart comes up to you at the skate park, you know. Hey, I'm a big fan. Big fan of your program. Gonna tell her to go away. You gonna tell Kristen to go away? Probably not, right? Probably gonna do one of these. And then one of these. Probably gonna do one of these. Women are throwing themselves at me. If Christina Stewart comes up to you at the skate park and she says, Hey, whatever your name is, I'm a huge fan of your show, but I will give you my phone number if you go on your channel and denounce everything you've ever said. You're probably gonna do it, right? You're probably gonna go like this. <laughs> if Christiana Stewart comes up to you at the coffee bean and tea leaf, which I imagine this guy thinks has the best coffee, if she comes up to you and says, hey, hey, go on your channel and denounce everything you've ever said and I'll dump my matcha latte on your beanie, <laughs> probably gonna do it, right? She looks homeless. Oh. You know, for me, yeah, it strikes a little bit close to home, because I'll tell you. Okay. The way her hair looks, yeah. greasy and dirty, her face, right? it really does remind me of friends that I've had who, when they became drug addicts, let themselves go. Oh, well, hey, can I finish? I think she's going to be okay, multi-millionaire movie star. I think, you know, glad you're concerned, but I, I'm pretty, huh? I'm pretty sure she's going to be Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those where it's just like, okay, you got an upload for the day. You know, congratulations, you uploaded. The, well, so what? what's the problem? You're pissed off that Chris, you're pissed off at a movie star that was in like one of the most popular, what, kid children's movies ever? You're pissed off that she wore a tank top in a photo shoot? Okay, well, you made a video and that's something to you'd be proud of. And this sort of reminds me of that weird psychology on Reddit. You know, where they'll they'll post a picture of a movie star. I saw this with Zendaya. Zendaya. I saw this with Zendaya and Margot. <laughs> Somebody posted a picture of Zendaya and Margot Robbie, and they were like, they're sixes. They're sixes, man. Zendaya's a six. Margot Robbie's a six. You know, they there's some weird psychology going on in the lunatic Reddit world. You know, they probably watch this guy. It's the same kind of thing. Somebody's got to say to those young guys... You don't have to keep a whole foot in reality, but maybe keep a toe, you know? Maybe keep a, the side of a foot. Try to keep some grasp of the real world off internet. Because real talk, you know? These guys who are posting Zendaya's a six, you know? These same guys, you know, Zendaya comes up to them at the Del Taco. They're in LA, you know, so she comes up at the Del Taco, offers to... <laughs> Offers to dump her avocado sauce protein bowl on their head. You gonna say no? No. You're gonna say yes. Well, guys, there we go. Catch it up on the headlines and getting a little weird. And for that, on this beautiful Wednesday, we... Praise God. Hit me again. Praise God. Thank you. Oh, my God. I hope you guys are doing great. Hope you're having a beautiful week. You know what I mean? You know, mix things up a little bit this week. Call someone a... Pendejo. But, of course, a Lana Del Rey, Lana Del Rey. Praise God to all of you. And I will talk to you soon. Love ya. Bye bye. I might just walk out here and think I'm gonna take about a week off. Guys! You're not getting the whole show, okay? Please, for Christ's sake, become a member on Patreon, okay? For as little as two bones. When you join on Patreon for as little as two stupid little bones, you get the Tuesday, Thursday shows every week. The comments program where you can ask questions or tell stories or do whatever and it, it's a whole show. Behind the scenes crap. All for a two putrid little bones, that's it. And if you really want to support the wretched show, people call it because they're satanic, they're sick, you could become a producer for only 25 bones. These beautiful people here are... They... God! God! Without those producers, it's over, man. It's, it's done. Do you think we can do the show without the producers? Okay, because if you do think that... <laughs> you got another thing coming, my man. You got a totally different thing coming. Without the producers, it is it is as good as over. Hello? Is anyone listening to me? Please answer. I'll wait. Please answer. Our hearts and our toilets are forever endowed unto the producers from which all light comes. Praise God. Praise God. It really is amazing to have such beautiful producers, and if you want to do it, oh my God. 
I, you know, I don't know. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> you know, I love the producer so much that I wrote a little song about him. Here we go. Hit it with the hell the producers. We're going straight to hell. And then we'll go down to the lower level of hell where you can't get out. Oh, Not even for good, good behavior slash deeds. Go, go down there. Deeds. Oh, 